So welcome back everybody and today's quirky tech is an old forgotten um, relic, the Sony Ericsson K500i and before you get your hopes up I'm just going to go right ahead and turn it on. Um, yeah, it sort of does that so unfortunately I was not able to revive this device. Uh, I suspect the battery has gone wrong because it was swollen at some point. I put it up for charging but it didn't manage to... Well, it shows it's charging but actually the phone does nothing. So I don't know, it might be the phone's fault, it might be the battery's fault. I just got it as a quirky relic of the past just to present it on the channel. So here it is. The writing is on the wall as they say. I'm going to try and zoom in and show you exactly the specs. Let's see if I can get them. Yeah, so there they are. Well, the Sony Ericsson K500i, something or other made in China. Let's just get back to the device. Um, Unfortunately, this one doesn't work, so I'm just going to say a few words about it and leave it be with the promise and um, commitment that I shall not be presenting any more broken devices on this channel. So you have my word on that. This is the last non-functioning or pseudo-functioning phone from the 2000s. It's a feature phone. It sort of tends to be a budget phone because the K700 was the top dog, the top tier, the flagship, the whatever you want to call it. It had a premium camera for that time. This one also only has a VGA camera, though it has this funky uh, round um, bezel covering the mimicking a bigger camera, a bigger sensor and uh, quite trendy at the time piece of um, mechanical um, shutter release so once you open this thing up the camera should start working. Also the precursor to the selfie craze this fun little mirror here on the back there's a couple of grill um, patches supposedly for a speaker. I couldn't tell because this one, well it's not working, is it? So really, yeah, that's the phone. It doesn't have a jack port. Not that it matters too much. This piece of trim comes off. I'll save this for later because I have to give it back. This is supposedly a collector's item, though you cannot know how frustrating it is to keep receiving phones like this, not being able to show you anything about them. So yeah, um, the construction itself is very flimsy. And this is a reminder for all you kids out there um, complaining that today's phones are too expensive or rather on the opposite spectrum they're too low quality. Check this thing out. Creaking um, son of a gun and I can tell you for sure it cost a pretty penny but let's have a look at the specs. So in 2004, you were supposed to pay around, well, it doesn't say, but I can bet it was more than 250, maybe 300 euros for such a dazzling piece of tech with a 2 point, with a 1.9 inch TFT 65,000 color display, an LCD, obviously with 108 pixel per inch density, which is pretty bad even for that day's standards. It's only got a mini SIM connector. It's quite compact at 102 millimeters by 46 by 14 thickness, and it only weighs 80 grams. Go figure. 
So, not much else going on with it. There's wallpapers, 3D animations for pictures, yay, that's nice. Um, it was launched in 2004, the third quarter, and it's quite predictably now discontinued. It's got a weird design in the sense that um, this LCD display panel sticks out of the bodywork of the chassis of the phone, sort of like uh, throwing its chest out there, being proud of the Sony Ericsson logo. I don't really mind this design, though some people don't find it quite to their taste. So the power button's up top, supposedly there's some connector here, I can bet it's at least an infrared port. Though it might have some other connections. No, it's just infrared, no Bluetooth. Uh, the, there's USB cable, but uh, so USB connection ability, but it's a proprietary Sony Ericsson design, so no mini USB here. Colors, there's two variants, virtual silver or cosmetic blue, but this is, well, Obviously, it's the silver one, though that's a fancy word of saying gray, to my mind. So, this thing was not supposed to be the top dog, it was supposed to compete with, I don't know, the Nokia E50 and the like, so maybe some, not the N70 or 73, uh, but rather a much cheaper but still medium variant so not the bargain basement phone but not the top dog either if that makes any sense i quite like the design i would rate this as a collectible item quite high i'd say it's most likely that this thing will retain its value and will be desirable in some point in time though it will not cost anywhere as much as, you know, a small fortune. But who knows, maybe in 20, 10 to 20 years, this might, might still retain a couple of hundred euros. But that's just my silly way of um, making this video, justifying it and making it worthwhile. So don't take my word for it. I would not be ashamed, though, to consider this thing as a part of my collection, though I'm not really a fan of Sony Ericsson phones. I did own a T65 quite early on, in about 2004 or so, so I'm familiar with the brand and the design, and I was sort of into them, but not quite a fan, and I didn't go back to them. They're not bad, they weren't bad phones by any means, I just didn't feel the attraction, if that makes any sense. So, yeah, that's... So, really, that's been it for today's episode. I know it's a bit disappointing, I promise to remedy this and to switch to a new level of uh, content. Uh, the, and this is my resolution for this uh, year's YouTube, this year's YouTube uh, endeavor. Uh, stop presenting junk like this, that doesn't work. And as always, um, I buy or borrow useless, quirky, obsolete tech stuff, so you don't have to. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.